So let's talk about weather fronts for a minute. Uh, there's four main types of weather fronts. There's a warm front, cold front, stationary front, occluded front, and there's also what we call a dry line front. It's not really a true front, but it, uh, it works much like one. So I'm going to talk about those, starting with the warm front. Okay, a warm front is warm and moist air, generally coming from the southeast or the south, some sort of southerly direction in the northern hemisphere, especially here in the United States. Okay, warm, muggy, moist air is driven by a warm front in most circumstances. Okay, we think of it in the United States, especially, is because we got that Gulf of Mexico that is uh, basically bounded by Texas and uh, mainland of Mexico on the west side and Florida on the east side. And that, that, that pool of water, the Gulf of Mexico, is very warm and it, it's obviously very moist because it's water. Okay. Well, when we have southerly wind in the United States, at least in the eastern two-thirds of the United States, it's going to be it's going to be rather moist and it's going to be warm because it's coming out of the Gulf of Mexico. Okay, a lot of times it's driven by a warm front. Okay, warm and moist wind. It's also going to be accompanied many times by lower stratus clouds. Stratus clouds are those the gray, low blanket type clouds. Okay, sometimes it can contain light rain. It also can, can be a little bit windy, especially during the overnight time frame. Okay. Uh, it's going to also be attached to a low pressure system. Okay, if you don't have a low pressure system anywhere nearby, you're not going to have a warm front. You're just going to have southerly wind, but it won't necessarily be attached with a warm front. A warm front separates that warm, moist air that comes behind it from cooler temperatures that are ahead of it. A cold front is cooler and drier air moving into the area with a more or less northerly or northwesterly wind flow, okay? It can be rather windy. It can sometimes be very strong. I've seen 50, 60, even 70 mile an hour winds come behind a cold front. While it's attached to a low pressure, it's driven behind it. Basically what's pushing it is high pressure, okay? Again, if you push really hard on a basketball that's got a hole in it, it's going to puff air out of it really, really quick, okay? So behind a cold front is higher pressure. That high pressure is scooting that thing along, and that's why it can get pretty windy behind it. Just ahead of it or right along with it, it's not uncommon to see severe storms, thunderstorms, hailstorms, tornadoes. A lot of our most severe weather in the United States comes associated just ahead right with the cold front. Generally behind it, you're going to see high pressure and therefore more fair weather. A stationary front is usually found at the tail end of a cold front or tail end of a warm front. And that's because the low pressure system that the cold front and the warm front are associated with is going to keep moving more or less from west to east. But there's still going to be a boundary of some sort that separates colder, drier air that came in behind the cold front and warmer, moister air that's, say, over the Gulf of Mexico or you know somewhere that the cold front hasn't come through yet. There's still going to be a boundary that separates those two air masses, but because the storm has kind of moved on, that low pressure has kind of moved on, uh, that boundary isn't going to be moving very, very quickly. It's kind of more just that tail end that kind of just gets stuck in limbo while the rest of the low pressure system has moved on. But because there's a separation of those two air masses, like I said, cold and dry, warm and moist, because there's that separation, there has to be a front there. That's what fronts do is they separate air masses. Okay. A stationary front doesn't really move very much. Okay. It can kind of wiggle back and forth. It doesn't have to be completely stationary, but it's not going to move much. It's definitely not going to move fast. Generally, uh, pretty cloudy. Can be moist. It can be dry. It can be warm. It could can be cold. To kind of, kind of depending on where exactly you're at in relation to that stationary front. It's not uncommon to see some thunderstorms, and it's generally not going to be the most windy part of that low pressure system. There might be some wind, but it's not going to be an overall very breezy day. Occluded fronts are a little bit more complicated, but they are found when the high pressure pushing the cold front very, very fast 
starts to catch up with the warm front. And you can see it on the slide there, but where the cold front and the warm front kind of come together and they meet, now all of a sudden there's an occluded front that's there. The occluded front more or less cuts off some of the supply needed for the low pressure system. Remember, the low pressure system is there because at the surface there is warm air feeding into it. Okay, that's what the warm front does. It, it provides food in the low levels to that low pressure system so that low pressure system can then lift that energy and create storms out of it. Okay, so the warm front kind of feeds that low pressure system. But the problem is, is that cold front is moving much faster because that cold front has that high pressure behind it, pushing it along. And it's gonna catch up with that warm front. And when it catches up, it no longer, that warm front's no longer able to really sustain that low pressure system. And we get what we call an occluded front. This is generally when that low pressure system is at its mature state. And this is when we start to see our nor'easters uh, for those who live up in the upper Midwest, our big snowstorms and wrap around snow activity heavy snows, blizzards, all of that. A lot of that's gonna come right along where that occluded front is. Now the dry line is not a typical front because it's not attached to a low pressure system necessarily. It, it can be uh, very near to a low pressure system, but it's not necessarily attached. It can sit completely on its own. And it separates the hot dry air from the desert and the hot moist air from the moister parts, say the Gulf of Mexico. Many times it's found through the state of Texas. It can extend up into Oklahoma, Kansas. I've seen it up into the Dakotas. So it can extend several thousand miles. I've seen it as far west as eastern Arizona and as far east as about San Antonio, Laredo, Texas. So it kind of wobbles back and forth in there. It's not always there, um, but it is there a lot of times during the spring season and the fall season. It just separates the air mass. They're both hot air masses because of the desert on one side and the warm Gulf of Mexico on the other side. They're, they're both hot, but the desert is dry. The Gulf of Mexico is moist, and there's gotta be a separation between those two air masses. The dry line can also cause severe weather on it because of the interaction between those two air masses, especially if a cold front comes and intersects with that dry line. Now all of a sudden you've got basically two weather fronts working together and that can produce severe weather outbreaks.